Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Change Bible Study. My name is Chris Bailey. I'm excited for this study because we're talking about being made free in Romans chapter six. Today, we're going to learn that we're not just free from the penalty of sin, which is eternal death, but we're also being made free from the power of sin. Before we go there, if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to this channel. We appreciate you. Like the video so other folks can find it. And go to our website. If you're there already, great. It's changeministry.org. Enjoy it and share it with somebody else. So with that said, let's pray. Father, I thank you. And I'm asking now in the name of Jesus that you would please teach us, reach us. Amen. Romans chapter six is a beautiful chapter because it takes the illustration of baptism and zooms in on our experience, not just in the moment, but in the lifetime, the movement of God until we see him face to face. And we've already talked about how we've been set free from the penalty of sin, which is eternal death. Remember, all these promises here in Romans chapter six are for those who, in verse three, who've been baptized into Christ. Now, if you have, guess what? That's not the only freedom we have. We can be free daily from the power of sin, because in verse four, it says, therefore, we're buried with him, that's Jesus, by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. There it is, that word walk. Now it's speaking from the moment to the life. From the moment of baptism, from the moment you say, yes, Lord, you accept Jesus and you accept his forgiveness, that's called justification. You've been treated just as if you'd never sinned. That's justified. But that's the moment when Jesus takes your hand and he takes your hand to now lead you for the rest of your life. That holding of the hand, that leading in the journey into heaven, that's sanctification. And that's why it's speaking now to that moment from now to the life. It's a new life. It's a new way of going. And you go where? What direction? Keep reading. It says, knowing this in verse six, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. That's the new direction. We go away from sin and not to, but in salvation. We've been saved to live saved. We don't live saved to be saved. That's called righteousness by works. But a righteousness by faith is just as much faith as it took for him to, to, to let me hold on to Jesus. I now trust that faith to hold me till I see him face to face. So now we're dealing with the life and looking at this new direction that we go. That's why when you look at verse number 12, excuse me, verse number 13. No, no, no. Go back up to verse 12. It says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Notice that this verse is important because it's telling us that there is still sin in our mortal body. The desire to do what is wrong. The, the, the temptation, that's Satan's. But what is he trying to tempt? He's trying to tempt the inclination, the bend, our iniquitous and fallen nature to go back to where we used to be. But verse 12 says, don't let it rain, but instead choose a new master. Verse 13 says, neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God, the new master as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin, verse 14, sin shall not have dominion over you. For you're not under the law, but under grace. This didn't say sin would not be in you. That's what we're awaiting when we're gonna be freed in that second or that third level of freedom. We'll talk about that in the next study. But until then, sin is present with us, but I'm not gonna obey it. Believers don't bow. Believers believe in the power of God. What happens when I'm in the power of God? Well, the Bible teaches us that in verse 16, know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom ye obey. Whether it's to sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but you've obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you, being made free. Being then made free from sin, ye become the servants of righteousness. 
That's what it means to be freed from the power of sin. It means now that we are servants. We have the same job. We have the same employee, but we work for a different company. Thank you, Jesus. We're under new management. And by the spirit now, just as easy as we would give in to do our will, we now grow to become able to live God's will. We give into his program. And that's what it means to be freed daily and constantly from the power of sin, even until Jesus comes. And so, beloved, let's remember this, because this is our promise. This is what is here for anyone who's accepted Jesus Christ, because if you were able to take his forgiveness, guess what? You can take his faith and that's to live out his will moment by moment. 